Hello and welcome to PixInsight tutorial number five for SAS members. In this tutorial we're going to look at masks. Masks are a very important part of the PixInsight processing workflow. We're going to look at luminosity masks, star masks and range selection. These are the three main types of mask that we will be using in the next selection of processes uh, that we'll look at with our non-linear stretched image. Now we have our stretched RGB master, we now move on to enhance the image. The master needs to be studied in detail and decisions made as to what we can do to the image to make it into a final good quality photograph and the remaining videos in this series will look at these enhancements. A fundamental part of this future processing is the application of masks. Now a mask is a separate image uh, that you generate and then apply to your master image when carrying out future processes. A mask protects certain parts of an image while selecting other parts. Masks are grayscale images that we generate. And it's always good to remember that when you look at a mask, the black area is protected, i.e. there won't be any changes to it, and a white area will receive whatever processing you're doing to it. Masks selecting certain different parts of an image, such as an area of high signal or stars, can be combined with pixel math. The first mask we're going to look at is a luminosity mask. This is one of the main types of mask used in nonlinear processing. A luminosity mask is a grayscale image where the pixel values in the proportional to the luminosity of the pixels in the image to be processed. The luminosity of an RGB image can be extracted from the image. The resulting grayscale image can then be manipulated to provide greater or lesser protection to certain areas. Also, the mask can be inverted so that the level of protection selection is reversed. Making luminosity masks takes practice and experimentation. However, there are a number of rules to follow. These are the steps that I use to make a luminosity mask. And there will be a fairly long uh, demo video to follow. So, to start, you make a clone of the master image. You click on the image identifier box, which is on the left hand side border and you drag to an empty part of the screen. Release the mouse and you have created your clone. Then open RGB working space and reset the process. Within RGB working space change the luminosity setting for the red, green and blue to 1. Apply this process to the clone image and rename it RGB111. You apply it by dragging the blue triangle as we've done before. You then go to the main menu and you go to Image, Extract, Lightness and Execute. This will provide you with the luminosity mask. Name this LUM Mask 111. So you now have a luminosity mask that will protect the RGB pixels equally. Save both images. You then apply a gentle S-curve to the mask in Curves Transformation with the uh, setting box as RGB stroke K. The next mask we will look at is the Range Selection mask. This creates a black and white mask. It's found under Process, Mask Generation, Range Selection. 
This process creates a black and white mask without grayscale. So 100% effect in white areas and no effect in the black areas. This can cause harsh transitions between areas with signal and areas of background. There are fuzziness and smoothness sliders that can reduce these harsh transitions. The process has a real-time preview to assist in the mask preparation. You can also use the smoothness slider to eliminate stars. You can then clean up the image with process painting clone stamp. This will be demonstrated. On this slide I've shown the range selection process window and also the preview window. To create this mask I have a lower limit setting of 0.25, a fuzziness of 0.19 and a smoothness of 54.5 with the lightness box ticked. The third and final star mask we'll look at in this video is a star mask. This is found at process mask generation star mask. This selects stars based on the process settings that you input. It requires careful tuning of parameters to include or exclude the required stars. It can be combined with morphological transformation to grow or shrink the selected stars. You can make star masks with different sized stars and these can then be combined in pixel map. Also, the star mask can be used to remove stars from a luminance or range mask again with pixel map. Star masks are used in many processes. Here I have shown the star mask process window with the settings I use for selecting large stars and also medium stars and small stars. By tuning the large scale, small scale compensation and the scale button, you can manipulate the star mask to select different sizes of stars. Here I will demonstrate uh, making a number of masks. Firstly, I'll make a luminance mask, followed by a range selection, and finally a star mask. I'll show you what we can do with that. I've chosen this uh, image of Andromeda. It's the one we did the mask stretch on last time. It's got a number of issues, particularly if you look here, I've got some out of focus red in the stars, so and uh, yeah, quite a number of them. So it'll give, um, particularly the star mask, a bit of a challenge. But it's always worth looking at this image, which isn't perfect because it gives you a better idea of uh, of what's possible. I'm going to take a clone of this image, and the way you do that is to click on the image identifier and drag that to a clear area of workspace. Release the mouse and we now have a clone. It's important that you work with clones on Mars because you don't want to do any uh, anything to your main image that you may then have to undo so you can carry on processing it. The first thing we're going to do is to go to process, color spaces, RGB working space. This is something we met in tutorial. And if we have a look at the clone, we can see that we've got luminance coefficients here and basically these are the sRGB which your screen uh, will display and as you can see it's heavily biased towards green because that's what the eye picks up. Now in terms of making a mask, we're going to change these. It, uh, it won't affect the end image but it does affect the mask. So what we're going to do is drag each of the coefficients up to 1 
and then we're going to get the little blue triangle and execute on this clone. If we now go back and select the clone image, you'll see that they are now equal. Uh, they'll always equal one, uh, you can't go higher than that, so we've got red, green and blue with the same luminance, which will help to make sure that we pick up all of the colours in our mask equally. So we're now finished with RGB working space. And now what we will do to make the mask, which is always a grayscale or a black and white image, we will extract the luminance. Now I have a little button here, which is extract C-E-I-L. You can also go to image, extract, lightness, And there we have the lightness. This image is the basis of our luminance mask. We can now minimize the clone and we can go to work on this image. As you can see it picks up the, uh, the luminance pretty much as the previous image was and if we put this on a, as a mask at the moment it would have a very small effect other than in the, uh, the core of the galaxy. So we need to make the light areas brighter and the dark areas stay dark and then we'll be affecting the areas we want to, i.e. the galaxy, and not affecting the background, being the whole purpose of a mask. So to do this, we go to Process, Intensity Transformation and Curves Transformation. Reset the process, bring up the real-time preview and now we can have a play with the image. What we want to do is make the brights brighter and not bring up the background. So if we stretch from here you can see everything's getting brighter and now if you're in readout mode, if you go on the real-time preview to an area of the background and click the mouse, you can see on the histogram the level that the background's at, which is uh, it's around about nearly, nearly a quarter of the way along the histogram. So we want to darken that area. So what we can do is put a point up above it and then drag down and you can see now we're darkening the background but we're keeping the area of the galaxy nice and bright. So if we execute that, don't worry about that, it's what happens So because it applies it again, just reset and then have a look at the mask. Now you'll see at the moment we're affecting everything that's white, so we're affecting the stars and we're affecting the bright areas of the galaxy. Let's close. Close the curves transformation and rename this Lum Mask. Okay, so that is our luminance mask. We'll now move on and again use the cloned image because you've done the RGB WS on that and now we will look to create a range selection so we go to process mask generation range selection now what this process does is create a black and white mask so there are it's not grayscale like the luminance mask it's black and white so it's more intense uh, because it covers all light areas as white and all dark areas as black. But it does it does have its uses, and uh, particularly on this image, if we, if we want to bring everything up in luminance, then we can use a range mask for that, and I'll show you that in a little while. So reset the process again. Open the real time preview. As you can see, we've got a completely white screen. So what we need to do is grab the lower limit slider and then slide that towards the right and you'll start to see we're getting white areas where the galaxy is, black areas with the background. So 
So that's nicely picking up the light areas and it's also leaving some of the dark areas on the edge of the galaxy where we don't particularly want to make those brighter. So that's at about 0.2 and what we can do now is uh, we'll try and smooth it out a little bit because we've got a lot of stars in there and we've got a lot of, uh, if you look here, there's a lot of quite jagged edges so that won't give us a particularly nice um, change between white and black. So we can resolve that. We go to the fuzziness slider, move that along. Again, that's picking up some areas, and then we're going to move to the fuzzy smoothness. Sorry. And what smoothness does is get rid of a lot of the stars, and it then changes those transitions from being very abrupt. We have a look again to quite smooth. So that will give us a nicer effect when we uh, apply changes to the image. So if we're happy with that, which I am, again we just grab a little blue triangle and drop it onto our cloned image. Reset the process, close it, and the real-time preview. So now we have a range mask, nicely titled for us, and we have a luminance mask. Now the luminance mask still has all the stars in it, and that's an issue because when we try and brighten uh, the galaxy and when we try and increase the saturation, we're going to get the same effect happening in the stars. So somehow we need to remove the stars. Pixinsight has a process for this, it's called star mask. Now, these are settings which I have used quite often and they work quite well. We'll see how they work in a moment. So, noise threshold 0.5. So, on a scale of 0 being black, 1 being white, everything at 0.5 and below will be regarded as noise and will be ignored. So, that will be all the tiny little stars which we don't need, particularly need to get to, to, to mask. Um, and any noise. Working mode is star mask, the scale is 6. Now that's quite high, um, but it'll pick up large stars. So large scale growth, this means the amount that the large stars will be dilated by, make it slightly larger. Small scale, we don't need to do that, and we have a compensation of 2. Smoothness, uh, that is put in at 6 because we don't want the stars to grow too big. Uh, the default is 16, it's way too high. You also hit binarize because that will make your stars all white. And then in terms of the mask processing, we put the shadows at 0.9 and the midtones at 0.95 because really we're just trying to pick up stars and we're not trying to pick up any of the, uh, any of the detail within the galaxy. So let's run that onto the LUN mask. It's important that you use the mask because you've obviously done a stretch on that and they're the stars that, uh, that we need to, uh, to pull out into the mask. So run the process. The process is now coming towards completion and it will generate for us a star mask. The last 2% of course takes forever. And there we have it. So we can close out of star mask process now and we can have a look at our mask. And what we've tended to do is pick up the larger stars. Now to have a look at the effect of this mask, what we can do is apply, apply it to the luminance image by dragging the image identifier into this left hand grey border, release it and that will add the mask. Just minimise that and then if we zoom in we can see where the mask is covering or not covering our stars. We can then do an inversion of the mask which will show the dots. Now you can see here that we've got dots but they're not covering the stars particularly well. They're leaving the um, the halos and that's why it shows this image to a certain extent because
those uh, courses problems. And we've also got one here in the centre of this little uh, little galaxy. So to modify this star mask to make it work better, and we can leave it on the image. Let's take the star mask and we'll go to process, morphology and morphological transformation. Now, this is something which operates on the stars. We have dilation, which will increase the stars, and we have erosion, which can reduce the stars. There are others, but don't worry about so don't worry about those for now. So what we want to do is go dilation. We'll go for 13 elements. That's supposed to be the maximum size. We go for one iteration, keep into into lacing on one and let's try an amount of one so we apply this to the star mask and it will grow our stars for us there we are so we minimize that process because we might not be done with it yet and let's go back to the image and let's have a look at the stars. Now you can see the stars have grown and they are now covering the majority of the halos. Again I've said this is a bit of a tricky image but that is a much better mask. Now this little one down here is a bit of a pain so we need to get rid of it. Uh, there's no real uh, science in this so what we'll do is we'll just overlay can see that it's uh, that star there that's the problem so it's this one so what we do is we go process painting clone stamp reset it and we have it set at 50 you want a capacity of one because you're obviously trying to get rid of that little uh, that little blink and let's just uh, check yep yeah, it's this one here so on the Mac you hit command Click the mouse release and you basically paint out that star. And if there's any others which are causing you an issue, uh, you know, if it picks up a core of a galaxy, that's uh, an easy way to get rid of it. Click the little tick, exit the process, and now we've got a nice looking, uh, nice looking star mask. And you can see that the little bit of star mask in this galaxy has disappeared. Let's minimize the star mask and then we will remove the mask. So how do we make use of this star mask? And if you want to make, uh, if you want to include all the stars, you can read up online and you can change the parameters and then that will do it. But I tend to take the larger ones out. So what we can do here is we want this luminance mask minus the very large stars. So we go to process, pixel math, okay. reset it. Pixel math can be as difficult or as easy as you like. Uh, we have it set on RGBK because we've only got uh, one image we're going to do a change to. We go to the expression editor. You can see here the images are listed for us and there's all the sort of functions that we need but this is a very simple one. So we've got LUM mask, so we double click on that. And we basically want to take away, so minus the star mask. Click that, hit pass just to make sure it's all okay. That's fine. Click okay. And now we need to say, what is the destination for this? So we can create a new image or we can replace the target image. So for the sake of having another mask, let's create a new image. Call it Lum No Stars. Uh, color space is the same as the target. Everything else is the same. So basically we just click the blue triangle, drop it on the Lum mask. And there we have it. We've now got the Lum mask minus the large stars that we picked out. Uh, on the star mask and that's a useful mask to move forward with 
We can also do the same if we want to on the range mask. So that's a workable image now, that one we can keep. So if we stay with our pixel math, we go back to expression editor, we can highlight by clicking and dragging the lum mask, change it for range mask. So we now have a range mask minus star mask. Pass and check, that's okay. And then again, drag the, sorry, let's just change the image ID. Range, no stars. And then we drag the little blue triangle. And there's our range mask with the stars taken away. So that's the way of making, uh, there's uh, three masks there, and then we've combined them uh, into two more. So in total, we've got a total of five masks that we could use on our image. And uh, that's the way I've done it for a long time. Um, you do need, I mean, you can see here that I've got, there's the odd issue there, look, with um, uh, a bit of a halo. We can paint that out if we want to. Um, but I've tried to do this sort of quickly and efficiently, but you do have to spend quite a lot of time on these masks. You may need several applications of morphological transformation to get your stars uh, the correct size. You may need to make uh, star masks for the small stars and then the medium and the large stars. I've sort of shown how to do the, uh, the larger ones, um, but you do that by changing the scale. So it's all possible. You don't have to, if you don't want to, um, go and buy Star Exterminator. It is a wonderful piece of software, but it's £50, and if you're not doing that much process, I'm sure you can find better things to do with uh, that kind of money. So uh, there we go. That's the video on masks. Here, finally, you can see the four masks that have been generated. In the top left is the luminance mask. Bottom left has the luminance mask with the stars removed. Top right is the range mask. And bottom right is the range mask again with the stars removed. Masks are a large subject and they do need practice to master them. It's worth spending some time uh, with a master stretched image and having a look at the sort of masks you can create and then the effects that each of them have. In the next video, we'll demonstrate the non-linear noise reduction process. And then in the videos following that, I'll demonstrate how masks are used in the nonlinear workflow. I hope you've found this video useful and enjoyable.